Welcome to this video about the Acoustic Localization Lab in the course. This uh, pr presentation will give you some insights to the background of the problem that you're solving, the data that you will have available, and also how to approach the lab works in the best way. Behind me right now, you see a typical data collection session for this lab. All the important components are included. You see the legal robot traveling around the track uh, while emitting uh, some annoying beeps at 2 Hz. These beeps are recorded by 8 microphones, of which you see 6 in this setup. The two at the top are just outside the field of view. Your task is, given the times when the beeps are recorded in the microphone, determine the position of the cart along the trajectory. Now, without background sound, let's uh, state the problem again. We have this robotic uh, Lego uh, vehicle that travels along this track. It emits uh, beeps every uh, half second, which is then recorded by these microphones. Due to the time difference of traveling to these microphones, the time when a beep is recorded is slightly different in the different microphones. And that is what you're going to utilize to detect uh, or position the robot. There are eight microphones in the setup. We have one and two up here, just outside of the uh, frame. Microphone three, four, five, six, seven, and eight for our setup here. You're going to use almost all methods discussed in the course to perform this localization task. Let's first talk about the measurements. The measurements in each microphone are raw uh, acoustic data as seen here. This is for microphone one. We can see at what times the robot was close to the microphone with stronger volume here, and when is it further away. As you noticed when uh, we played the video of the data collection session, there is a lot of background noise. Hence, we uh, bandpass filter the signal to get as much of the uh, useful signal as possible without the remaining noise. Once we have done the bandfast filtering as here, we do apply a matched filter to the beep that is emitted from the uh, robot. We use these to detect uh, the tops, the peaks here, and report that as the detection time for the uh, beeps in the microphone. You are given these detections. These are the tasks that you should perform during the lab. I have uh, separated them two categories based on the type of knowledge that you need to have to perform these tasks. So the first category here includes sensor calibration in which you use a specific uh, calibration experiment to determine the noise levels of the de detections of the times the beeps arrives in the microphones, and also if there is any considerable delay in the delivery of signals to, to one of the microphones. Based on this, you build a physical signal model, including the noise uh, description that you figure out above, and then construct a model in MATLAB to deal with this. Based on this, you look at two configurations for detecting and tracking the, the robot on the field. And based on uh, your analysis, you should be able to then afterwards tell which of these uh, setups with microphones will perform the best and where you can expect to get good performance in localizing the robot. Finally, in this part, you look at the snapshots of measurements, that is the times that a single beep arrived in each of the microphones and localize the robot based on that. All this uh, relates to the material that's presented in the course about parameter estimation. In the second part, we'll look at uh, introducing the dynamics of the robot into a problem. 
So using the fact that we know that the robot cannot move in any uh, way, it needs to be a smooth, physically uh, plausible trajectory, and use that to improve the estimate of the position. So you will do that, and then you will analyze the sensitivity uh, of the system for small errors in the knowledge about the location of the microphones. To provide an even more clear mapping between the tasks in the laboratory work and the lecture material. The first five tasks can be dealt with after the three first lectures. You of course have help of the uh, exercise sessions that are associated with these lectures as well. The remaining tasks can be dealt with after the sixth lecture. If you don't use a particle filter for the tracking part, in which case you need to wait for another two lectures to get all the material about particle filters. The tasks in this lab are formulated in such a way that it's not obvious how to perform them. This is intentional. We want you to think about how to solve the kind of problems that naturally occur in this setting uh, with the tools that you have learned throughout the course. In this case, you are not only supposed to see what happens if you do something, apply a method or uh, similar. Instead, you're yourself uh, asked to figure out how to solve a normal problem for the setting with the methods that we have discussed in the course. By doing so, you learn to know a lot more about the methods that we study and how to think about this kind of problems. Of course, this is a more time-consuming way of having a lab. But that's also uh, part of the planning for the course, that you will spend time with this to learn the methods more in depth. The lab is examined with the lab report. Each group writes a lab report, uh, outlining what they have done and what they have experienced throughout the lab. The lab report is then peer reviewed by a different group. That is, every group peer reviews a different group's lab report and make comments about what they think is good and uh, what is less good in the report. This is a blind peer review in the sense that you don't know who reviewed your report and no one knows which report they reviewed. After the re peer review, you get the chance to uh, improve your report before sending it to us. You're also supposed to write a rebuttal in where you describe what you have done based on the reviews that you got. Let's summarize. The goal of the lab, of course, is to uh, localize this uh, Lego robot as it travels around the track based on the measurements of the beeps in the microphones that you have available. The main objective from the course perspective, though, is slightly different. Uh, one is to uh, let you work with real data. Real data comes with uh, a lot of uh, artifacts and imperfections that it's difficult to grasp unless you have actually tried working with real data. You should also gain uh, first-hand experience of the taught methods to use them for real and see how they uh, work. And finally, an important part of the laboratory work and how it's designed is to connect the different parts of the course using the lab data as a, a unifying factor. So by using the same data throughout the course with more or less all the methods that we discuss, you get a red thread through the course and should be able to better relate different methods to each other. The examination is a report that is also peer reviewed. And uh, I want to point this out. We expect this lab to be fairly time consuming, 64 hours. Uh, that is based on the fact that there are many tasks that you have to do and that the tasks are specified in such a way that you have to work out yourself exactly how to solve them. Uh, this means that it's an important part of learning the material of the course. So my recommendation here to you is to make sure to work continuously with the lab during the course to get the most out of it. It will help you following the theory on the lectures and also to uh, finish the lab in time. 
I hope you will have fun playing around with real data and noticing how much you can actually do with the methods that we described in the course. And good luck with uh, the lab.